welcome. So what settings do I need to cut that out on my laser? And I get that question a lot and you know, okay, you know, I've got this uh, project or I've seen this project you're doing here. What settings do I need? Well, that depends. And what we always say, and this comes up a lot on our uh, weekly Wednesday night live streams as well, how often is, what settings do I need for my laser? Well, it depends on the material. It depends on what laser you have, what power you have, and from batch to batch on material, even there, they're not all the same. We need to run some tests. And I'm gonna go over that here real simple. I'm gonna show you in Lightburn here how to set up some material tests. It's built right in the Lightburn. It's very, very simple. I also have some uh, downloadable uh, test grids you can download from our website for free that are already made up. So I'm gonna show you some examples here of some tests. And not all materials are the same. And what I'm gonna show right off the bat here is some on quarter inch plywood. So here is a test run on quarter inch of one plywood. And for this example and these tests I'm using, I'm using the Algo Laser uh, DIY Kit MK2. It's a 10 watt laser, it's a great entry level laser. So uh, I'm gonna be using it as an example. So yes, you can cut pl quarter inch plywood on a 10 watt laser. Don't tell anybody, anybody tell you you can't. So this is the power settings and speeds and three passes. Now, take more quarter inch plywood, but a different brand. As you can see, things are just a bit different. Now we'll take uh, eighth inch plywood. So we have this brand of eighth inch, eighth inch plywood, and we have this brand of eighth, eighth inch plywood. And from the same batch of over here, or I shouldn't say same batch, but same brand, but different sheet, we have this. And they're all done the same. That's why you need to run material tests. Uh, if you're doing, for example, acrylic, black acrylic, don't even try clear. You need to run material tests. And no, you won't engrave white. I penciled some white in on that so that it would show up a little bit better. But you need to run material test first, this eighth inch black acrylic. If you're gonna be doing ceramic tiles and you're gonna be engraving, you'll need to run a test. We do a lot of these, and I have a lot of videos on uh, this particular grid. This is a Nicky Norton white tile method, and this particular grid pattern is available all over the internet. Uh, since I'm not the author of it, I'm not gonna share it, but if you put in Nicky Norton white tile method, in the Google, you'll find this file somewhere. It's all over the place. So there's, you know, just another example. Okay, well, what do you do with these grids? Well, for, this is for engraving, not for cutting. So what you would do is you would go powers across the bottom, your speed in millimeters per minute here. That's a dial laser. So, and you want to find the best, darkest color that's not like just deeply engraved somewhere. So for this particular laser, the Algo laser MK2 right here. I'm gonna engrave these ceramic tiles. I wanna go with 1500 millimeters per minute at 60% power. That'll give me this dark layer right here. Now if I wanted to go slower, let's say I wanted to go at 750 millimeters per minute and still get that really dark color, we would go at 30% uh, power, but at 750 millimeters per minute. So just to kind of give you an idea, uh, getting back to getting back to these here. So um, you're looking at this, and uh, you can make this bigger. I, I shrunk this way down, and I'll show you how to make a, a bigger pattern here. This is done with three passes, quarter inch of one plywood, and this is your power down here. So we're at. 60% power at 200 millimeters per minute. Well, I found my sweet spot to be when I'm doing this at 350 millimeters per minute at 100% power, although this shows 400 at 100% power, give you a good cut. 350 at three passes will eliminate them little things that come up. I'll show you an example here. So on this Christmas ornament here, cut everything out, 
except that little corner right there. Well, there was some funky stuff in the grain right there, so that one didn't quite cut out all the way. And that's what you want to avoid, because that kind of stuff will drive you nuts. And I'll show you an example of something else that can happen. Uh, another Christmas ornament here. And it was going along just fine. But uh, hopefully you can see there's some like white down in here where it did not cut through. There was some type of filler in the plywood right there. And this, all this did was cut through the outside veneer. It would not penetrate that filler. So therefore, the back side of this didn't cut out. And this ended up being a scrap. And you will have that happen. I mean, it just happens. So I'm going to take you on the computer here. And uh, by the way, this is what that ornament looks like when it's completely cut out. I'll show you how to get your settings set up. And if you're going to cut like a welcome sign or you have some welcome lettering, it's quarter inch plywood, 10 watt laser. Yes, you can do it. Some people say, oh, you can't cut quarter inch plywood with a 10 watt laser. You need at least a 20 or 30. Well, no, you don't. Uh, we like to tell people if they're buying their first laser, you know, to maybe start out 20 watt is kind of that sweet spot. However, not everybody can afford that. And not everybody is experienced enough or know, or they don't know if they're going to really want to do this after they buy one. So when you get something uh, like this here, the Algo Laser DIY Kit MK2, it even comes with projects built into it that you can operate right from the screen. And I'll give you a little brief demonstration of one of those. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have a computer attached to it. Or you don't have to buy light burn if you don't want to. You can just play with those projects to get well acquainted with the laser and better know what you're doing. But at any rate, these material tests are important regardless of what material you're doing, whether it be wood or, you know, black acrylic or ceramic tiles, cork, leather, many things. So go on the computer here, I'll show you how to get one of these set up. Okay, here's how we do it here in Lightburn. And I'm connected to my uh, Algo MK2 DIY. Uh, you don't necessarily need to be connected to create one of these. So go up here to laser tools and right down here to material test and it'll bring up this uh, little window. So you want to edit your material settings uh, depending on what you're going to be doing and I'm just going to pick one here for some wood. You can go to your material settings. This is uh, what's going to actually be doing the, the uh, initial cutting out of the squares and you can also set this up for engraving. You don't have to do it for cutting. Just uh, pick your power accordingly. So uh, speed per minute, maximum or minimum at 500. I am going to change that to 200. Of course, we want max power 100%. The number of passes, we're going to go three passes because we're designing this for some quarter inch plywood. So that's pretty much all you need to do right there. Now we'll go over here to the text setting, and the default one here is pretty good for a 10 watt laser. 3,000 millimeters per minute, 90% power to give you some good night dark text that's in an offset fill. Now the last one here is going to cut out your border. So, if, and you can turn this off if you like, but if you want your piece cut out, and it's nice to save these as a little sample things when you need to go back and reference something if you're not writing things down in a notebook or something. It's nice to have these little cards. So your minimum speed per minute here, I happen to know, 350 millimeters per minute, 100% power, and three passes will cut that out absolutely perfectly out of quarter inch plywood. And I'm giving just examples here. If you're using eighth inch plywood or some other material, you're going to have to play with this. And right here is uh, where you can turn this switch off. You can disable the border cutout. You can also disable the text cutout. So now we're going to go up to here. So we got, we can go 10 squares each direction, 10 squares wide, 10 squares down. So for speed, my minimum I want to have here, I'm going to go with uh, 200. And my maximum. At 1800, you're not going to cut it at all. So if you want to really narrow things down, let's take this down to, uh, oh, 600. Whoop, didn't mean to do that. We're going to 600. 
Your squares are going to be uh, five millimeter by five millimeter. Over here in your power, you got ten levels. It's going to be ten percent to hundred percent. So now all you need to do is send this to the laser, and we'll get situated around here, and I'll show you that. Okay, so I framed this. Now all I need to do here is hit start. You can also click on preview if you want to see what your grid's going to look like. But we'll just click start here. This takes about 12 minutes to run. It'll do the letters first. And I am going to turn on the air assist so we don't get any scorching. And I am doing this on a honeycomb board. This is something you, you absolutely need to do with your different materials. And don't just rely on what if somebody is saying is a, the best setting because the, uh, I can take two of these lasers, put them side by side, and they may not necessarily perform exactly the same. And again, as I mentioned, from in batches of material, it can change drastically sometimes. So you always need to run a test. And they don't need even need to be this big. As it says, it takes about 12 minutes to run. I'm not going to show the whole thing here. But uh, this will give you an idea. Okay, we'll take a look at what we got here. That I had a couple little places that were didn't quite cut all the way through on the border cut. But now what you want to do when you do this is just kind of give it a little tap. As you'll see on the back side, there's some that like almost cut through but didn't quite. That's not the ones you want to use for settings. So here, looking at this. Uh, again, it's a quarter inch one plywood, three passes. So at 60% uh, power and 200 millimeters per minute, three passes give a good cut. If you want to go to 100% power, you can go up to uh, 422 millimeters per minute, which is quite a bit faster. So three passes and you'll still get that complete cut. But again, don't start pushing them pieces out because those are not cut completely through. And a, a, a 10 by 10 like this will give you a little more accuracy than a 5 by 10 like this here. But as you gain experience, you don't necessarily need to do the, uh, the 10 frame ones. You can do the 5 frame or smaller, and they take less time. Once you become experienced and you got a little bit of uh, some of that under your belt, so to speak, and you kind of know what a, a setting should be, you can just make uh, a little square. Just cut a little square out, you know, thinking that, yeah, that should be 400 millimeters per second and three passes, 100% power, that should do it. So a little half inch square here. And there it is. Well, as I said, once you get some experience there, you can do that and it's real quick, quick test or if you're switching to a different batch of material, it's a good way to make a test. So again, I would kind of stress the importance of it because uh, we get the question so many times, all of us laser guys do that are on YouTube, you know, we, we get these questions in emails and comments and, you know, well, what settings do I use? What settings do I use? What speed? What power? You need to run some tests. This is how to do it. It's very, very easy. 
and I, I hope that you got kind of an idea there what you need to do. It's, they're not difficult. And I want to give you a little preview of something you can do with this uh, Algo Laser DIY kit, MK2. I've mentioned that I show you they have some onboard projects. This is a USB cable, so the computer is no longer attached. You got a little touch screen here. You got the first screen here is projects, and we'll go into detail on this and make some of these in another video. You click on your projects there, and you have an SD card inside. You could actually put a USB stick on the end, and you could run this if you already had your G code created in Lightburn. Load on a USB stick, you don't have to have the computer tethered. And again, we'll show that in another uh, video. But they give you some example projects here. So uh, let's say you want to make this uh, keychain of this cat right here. You just click on that, and it tells you the material is 3 millimeter plywood, 10 watt laser. Your total time will be uh, 3 minutes and 13 seconds. The size of this in M&Ms, that's millimeters for you grammar police, is 54 by 53. So all you would do is click on that. Set your origin and range. Of course, I don't have any material in there right now, but you are able to frame it. That's this little thing right above start. So you can click on frame and uh, need to home. So it would do this right down here in this corner. Home that again. Now we'll do the frame. So it'll make that right there in the corner. That's just to give you kind of an example on how easy it is to do, and again, we'll get into this in another uh, video. And as I said, you can also run things offline if you like. Whoops. So you can do an engraving like that on 8th inch plywood if you wanted to. That's not one of the internal files, that's one of mine, but it can be run just from the G code. So there it is. Make those material tests. Like, as I've showed here, that they're not difficult to do. And it doesn't take much material. Just uh, use a little corner out of uh, your sheet of plywood or whatever you're working with. And again, once you get experience and you pretty much got a good idea where the settings will be, just take a little scrap, cut a little square out of the corner, and you're good to go. So hopefully that answers the questions about what settings do I need, what speed, what power. You know, well, there's so many variables, you need to run tests. And all the laser guys are going to stress this. So just thought I'd show you how you could do it yourself. There'll be a link in the description for this particular laser. This is a good entry level laser. Uh, no, it's not a 40 watt high powered one and it's not a enclosed class one and all that. But if you're just starting out and you want to kind of get your feet wet in the world of uh, laser engraving and cutting, this would be a good entry level laser. Uh, Algo Laser did provide this to me to demonstrate, but I've been using it for a whole bunch of uh, projects and they're not paying me to say anything nice here. So it's just what it is what it is. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate you getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. There'll be also be a link in the description for one of these test files you can just download to play with if you don't want to create one in Lightburn. Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.